thank you. And uh, thank you to the other presenters. It's been really enjoyable talks this morning. Uh, I have a mapping problem and have had for several years. I um, have been a GIS professional for over 30 years and have uh, do a lot of uh, open street map editing in East Africa. Uh, I support the Tanzania Development Trust uh, in, uh, in our efforts to combat FGM, and we've done a, a tremendous amount of mapping there and making huge progress. In my uh, day job, uh, LIDAR, uh, which is high resolution topography data, has been a, a tremendous uh, positive thing for the uh, geospatial world. And so now we have the ability to take advantage of the LiDAR data in OpenStreetMap. So I want to give an example showing some edits I made uh, using JOSM, uh, one of my local hikes. This is a, uh, this map, uh, the OSM data looks pretty correct in terms of the ortho imagery. And uh, we're using uh, Bing, in this case, and uh, the, the map, the line work looked correct. But never, ever trust imagery. Because imagery, whether it comes from a satellite, from a, an airplane, a helicopter, a, or a drone, in order to make it fit in and make it topographically or, or orthographically correct, the image has to be distorted. There is an ortho process that goes that imagery goes through, but it is essentially a rubber sheeting process. And here's the result of why not. So that first image, the the trails were exactly at the peak of the the summit. And in this case, the actual the summit was actually offset about uh, 10 or 20 meters. And so before later, I then up, updated OpenStreetMap to actually match the the ground topography. LIDAR is similar to radar in that radar uses radio imagery to measure distance and LIDAR uses imagery or a, a laser. And it's not just a matter of one or two uh, light pulses, but every second 100,000 pulses are sent out and returned uh, to a, a sensor on an airplane. And whenever you start talking 100,000 of anything, it takes a lot of time and processing power. And so therefore, it's only been in the last 20 or so years that the computers were really able to handle the amount of volume of data that received in uh, from the LIDAR process. That those returns, you get a cloud of points that are actually surveyed. And so every point that is returned is a surveyed location. And that's the key difference between LIDAR, high resolution topography, and ortho imagery. That every point location is surveyed with an actual measurement. You can, based on the reflectance, strip away the vegetation or infrastructure and have a bare earth digital elevation model, or you can, and then the top surface, or as a, a surface model, uh, you can show the vegetation. Or in this case here in Switzerland, a neighborhood where the uh, you can see the houses and the trees, and you can see that they all line up fairly well. There's a few uh, deviations, but so this would be the surface model. And then here is the elevation model, which would be the ground with the infrastructure and vegetation stripped away. Again, this just uh, being in ID. So in terms of uh, adding LIDAR for, for JOSM, you want to add a WMS service. And then uh, I searched for uh, the Department of Geology in Oregon has a WMS service for a hillshade. And then you go through these steps to add them into as a WMS service in JOSM. And here's the larger steps. If you want to take a screen grab of this, and then I also have the ID text, I ex don't expect you to uh, jot this down, but these are the steps. If you want to do a, a screen grab of that, uh, this would be what you would use for uh, JOSM. And then this would be the uh, result is now here we are in the uh, in JOSM actually uh, looking at the bare earth 
hill shade derived from LIDAR. And so the vegetation is stripped away. And you can see that we've been able to update the stream locations to accurately reflect their positional uh, location, as well as the roads and then the coastline. And uh, this has been pretty exciting for me. I do lots of hiking and notoriously the uh, USGS uh, quads in the past were very poor in terms of the positional location. And then GPS also has significant problems, especially when you get into a canyon area where you uh, getting a good signal is difficult. And so with LIDAR, you can get a very good uh, positional location. And so I have updated the entire Pacific Crest Trail in, in Oregon and would say that it's uh, you know, within, within a meter or two of, of being the true location. So if you want to do a screen grab of this, it's pretty ugly. Uh, this is how you would add the WMS service for the Oregon LIDAR in ID. And with that, I will conclude.